My brothers and sisters in Christ, today the church celebrates the memorial of St. Bernard of Clairvaux, a man who in today's terms could be described as the Time Magazine Man of the Year, but instead of Man of the Year, Man of the Century. Uh, he was, you know, Un, you know, indisputably by most standards, by most scholars, the man of the 12th century. He's founder of, you know, the monastery of Clairvaux. He is, you know, f so founder of his monastery, great theologian, scripture scholar, intervener in, uh, you know, in papal politics, preacher of the Second Crusade. He was the influential man of the 12th century in so many ways but a man of profound spirituality. And so, therefore, for today's spiritual reflection, I offer from the words of St. Bernard himself. This is the passage from today's Office of the Readings, from his own writings, and I share it with you. Love is sufficient of itself. It gives pleasure by itself and because of itself. It is its own merit, its own reward. Love looks for no cause outside itself, no effect beyond itself. Its profit lies in its practice. I love because I love. I love that I may love. Love is a great thing so long as it continually returns to its fountainhead, flows back to its source, always drawing from there the water which constantly replenishes it. Of all the movements, sensations, and feelings of the world, love is the only one in which the creature can respond to the Creator and make some sort of similar return, however unequal though it be. For when God loves, all he desires is to be loved in return. The sole purpose of his love is to be loved, and the knowledge that those who love him are made happy by their love of him. The bridegroom's love, or rather the love which is the bridegroom, asks in return nothing but faithful love. Let the beloved, then, love in return. Should not a bride love, and above all, love's bride? Could it be that love not be loved? Rightly, then, does she give up all other feelings and give herself wholly to love alone. In giving love back, all she can do is respond to love. And when she has poured out her whole being in love, what is that in comparison with the unceasing torrent of that original source? Clearly, lover and love, soul and word, bride and bridegroom, creature and creator, do not flow at the same volume. One might as well equate a thirsty man with the fountain. What then of the bride's hope, her aching desire, her passionate love, her confident assurance? Is all this to wilt just because she cannot match stride for stride with her giant, any more than she can vie with honey for sweetness, rival the lamb for gentleness, show herself as white as the lily, burn as bright as the sun, be equal in love with him who is love? No. It is true that the creature loves less because she is less. But if she loves with her whole being, nothing is lacking where everything is given. To love so ardently, then, is to share the marriage bond. She cannot love so much and not be totally loved. And it is in the perfect union of two hearts that complete and perfected marriage consists. Or are we to doubt that the soul is loved by the word first and with a greater love? St. Bernard of Clairvaux, Doctor of the Church, pray for us.